I thought, actually, I thought what I wanted to show was when we had the kickoff meeting. We had the kickoff meeting. We had the first and only, you know, we, we did meet a second one of our project officers. You know, Panoski had, I think, six or seven, I actually lost count, uh, uh, project officers. And the first one who came, they actually came to the kickoff meeting. And his name was Giert, Giert van Krenest, yeah? So I think he's Belgian. Uh, and, and he gave his own idea of what the EOSC is. And I thought it's interesting to go back to that today, four years later, at the end of this, yeah? and to see how far or how close he was and our ideas were after having invested so much effort into this. And actually, I think, I mean, for me, his ideas were very close to what I see as our next step, is uh, making this pan data commons something that we can use and that we can provide as open data. And he was seeing mostly the EOSC as something which was just a, a, a cloud of data provided by uh, the different communities, so federated data. And then uh, the, the users would add uh, value on top of this open data. And so, well, the users are always these 2 million EU researchers that we talk about, and they would um, have access to this data in a much, in, a, in an easier way than they have today. Today, there's not so much open data or it's not so easy to access. And then the, they would have tools to, to work on this. And what he said was, this is not a cloud from Brussels, but a research data commons driven by the stakeholders. And I think this is, this is very much in line with the vision I see. I think, and, and sorry to say, I don't think it's anyone from the EOSC, I uh, say from the association, but this, this, uh, all the effort that goes into the minimum um, viable ecosystem, or minimum viable EOSC. <laughs> and also the, uh, the, I mean, I think there's too much uh, money and time being wasted on trying to create something without having the stakeholders strongly involved driving this. And I think the driving thing should be the data. And so what I would push that in our uh, community, we should be really, if we can make this data high quality, open and accessible and, and you know, fair, then that we will have achieved a huge amount already and I think other scientists will be seeing that as well. The scientists will be seeing if we if we keep on talking about uh, uh, EOSC, EOSC things like exchange, EOSC, this, I mean we invent complete new vocabularies also that are difficult for us as people involved at the EOSC to understand. Imagine what the scientists are, you know, they're just going to switch off when we start bringing all these new terms for them to understand. And so I would I would really say, you know, I actually like Hertz's ideas was very, it was more pragmatic, and I would love to see all of the effort, the extra effort that goes into the EOSC go in this direction. Yeah. Um, and yes, yeah, so for, for me, this is actually should be, we've put this already in as something that we should consolidate, what we want to consolidate in Intra EOSC 101, but it's still a small amount of money. I think there's still the larger amount of money is going into other things which I haven't not such clear added value or zero added value. I mean, this was the point of my comment of all of these infrastructures have been uh, working now for four years and we're using nothing out of these common projects, you know. And, and I, I was just saying to someone that, um, you know, Bob brought up this example of AAI, very good example, but AAI is, is just, should just work. It shouldn't cost 200 million euros to have an AI for everyone. So to use AAI as a kind of alibi for the, you know, the fact that we're working on all these other expensive things, which are not services that we're really going to use, I think, you know, that's a bit of, it's, it's not fair actually in that sense. We should just say, yes, we need a common federated um, identity, but that can be done by just giving some money to Géant and the problem, <laughs> which would, you know, they, you know, I don't think that should be, uh, something that's actually uh, motivating all of these other projects which are being developed. I don't know if you've sort of picked this up yesterday from Uta's talk and that. There's a, there's a lot of other things going on and I think we need to go in there with a little bit of more, uh, say, Occam's razor, as they say, and clean things up a bit, have less of this. Yeah. Uh, so this is my wish list to Santa, which is not so far away. 
so yes, I, I still dream. I don't know where Patrick is. Patrick has maybe disappeared, but uh, yes, uh, yeah, he, uh, he had to leave earlier. But I'd love to see all of the facilities, and I see diamonds on the way, and I dream that uh, before I retire, Daisy will be there, that all the big data facilities will actually uh, not only adopt, but have implemented an open data policy. Fair, of course. I see this activity carrying on inside leaps and lands. I see this collaboration with the science clusters and also national projects like HMC, where we have Unaya, we have uh, Lisa. These are things which, sh you know, there's so much overlap there. We should be kicking these things off now with uh, meetings planned already uh, for the for next year. You know, they, these they, they, this, this, these are experts in these areas which can only improve what we're doing. And, and also for the tools, these will carry on. So I think uh, a lot of the tools that we've developed, like we've heard a lot about Visa, about other things, these have will be continued and we've realized the need to continue these things. Uh, Vincent mentioned the active uh, development around metadata standards, which we don't have enough. And so, yes, I, I, I would like to see data from all of the facilities being sold out there. Yeah? Uh, well, sold in a sense. And of course, well, we didn't get around to this yet, where I was hoping we could have a common document where everyone puts in their ideas of what to do. But I think you're all probably hungry or have uh, trains or planes to catch. And that was sort of, I think, all I wanted to say. No, yeah, and also don't forget the carbon footprint, <laughs> which corresponds to, uh, this is one experiment, corresponds to three and a quarter houses, you know, that's this whole floor probably full of carbon. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much, Andy. This is the end of the event, and I would like just to thank everybody that contributed to, to PANOSC. I thank you as well for coming here today with us, and you did a great job, and this is why this project has been a successful project. So thank you very much, everybody. We got champagne. And Jan Fransa will say something. Yes, I, I really would like to thank uh, Andy. I'm now working quite closely with him. We have meetings every week. And from the internal, I could see this, his commitment, his engagement for the community. This is mean, maybe not so visible outside, but he's working the weekends, the nights, you receive emails. And most of them are for the community. I think if we have got this project and we have these results, we really need to thank Sandy. <laughs>